Good afternoon, this is Zachary from Zachary Sweeps. Um, I just wanted to show you a couple of things with this appliance, um, how to get the baffle plate out. If you get a bird problem, birds come down with some of these because they just have Chinaman's hats. And if you look inside there, you can clearly see that there is like a, a hook there and it's resting on pins. So basically what you have to do is you just put your hand on the pin and drop it down like that. And then that way you can get, get the bird out, out of the flute. And away you go. You see these bars going across the, that, the one side to the other? They're, they're actually there to create warm air which is drawn from the back. And then as you can see, they've got, you've got vents there. And then the, the lever for the vent is here. So basically you can close it. Like so. Where it's, as you can see, it's all closed now. Or you can open it up. What I'd recommend you do is open it up when you first have your first fire. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to show you, uh, obviously the, the, these go back in, they can only go in one position. So let's see what we can do. Look at that. That's how easy it is. You can do it with one hand, no problem. I've had a few people saying about uh, with the soot, uh, gets in the way of the air vent if you leave the ash in there too long. Well, it, it doesn't. I mean, the, the reason why it's like this at the moment is to the customer selling this property and um, she wants them obviously to know that they've got two, two bars uh, that goes across uh, to stop the ash falling out. But realistically, you only want to use the top one and, and take that one, that bottom one away. Um, you can turn it around the other way. But the, 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 what I've done with the ashes, I've flattened it all down. So like you can basically put your finger in there now. So there, there won't be any ash dropping in, in at all. So like, um, and what you want is a nice one inch bit of ash in there to hold it into position. Um, open the vent, as you can see the, vent, the air vents here at the side. It's not gonna get in the way because this sits in deeper into the actual wood burner just enough to allow the air to circulate, but obviously it can circulate into that gap now. So when you first light your fire, you open it up fully, you open the vent up fully, you light your wood fire on top of that ash, and then, and then it will start to uh, roar away up there. It probably might struggle a little bit because it's snowing now, so it might be a bit difficult. But then the, the, as soon as that pipe gets to a point where it's red hot, then you'll know that it'll draw fine. And then what you want to do is you, with this vent, you want to close it right down like that. So it's literally, so you might even like, and obviously adjust this vent up here at the side here, uh, which will be, which will um, give you the option of the air coming over on the, uh, on the glass as well. And, um, and then you'll be fine. As you can see, there's a bit of a gap between the air vent the air vent, as you can see, because it sits in and it goes up there, and there's no, there's no gasket right there. So there you, you've got the air that will go up. This is specifically designed for wood burners only, and uh, it's a great appliance. To be fair, they they're really cool. But um, you don't have to. If it was mine, that 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 bottom bar wouldn't be there. It would just be the top one. It slide down in there. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, the customer wants me to leave it in there so otherwise I would have done it the other way and um, that's why I've made sure that there's enough air to go in the middle of that but when you compress down the, the ash it, it, it goes hard and um, if you've seen some of my other videos you'll, you'll know that um, um, what I should have explained before if it's a multi-fuel stove when, they go, when it goes rock hard on top of the grate it won't go through the grate some of them you can close the grates off uh, and then what you can do is you can empty the ashtray out and the, and the ash will stay in position. So like, um, so it, and the air, there'll be enough uh, clearance for the air to circulate in the appliance. So I just thought I'd, I'd do that because I've had a lot of, I've had a lot of questions about stuff like that recently, about the airflow and all that sort of stuff. But as you can see, um, this is kind of like, um, this is designed to have ash in it. You know, most wood burn, if they're wood burning only, most of them are designed to have ash only in them. And uh, remember that the grates were invented for coal fires. They were never invented for wood fires. You know, they, they, they came out when people started using 
coal fires because they wouldn't burn properly and efficiently if there if there wasn't any air going underneath it. That's why with a, a multi fuel you have a movable grate. It's not to get rid of all your wood ash. It's to get rid of all the coal ash. That's what it's designed for. And um, to, you know, if you go back a few hundred years, they only used to have an ash bed and they'd put the fires on top of the ash bed. They'd sent, they, they had the, you know, the cast iron back plate and they had them two dog legs on either side. And then they used to build the ash right up and then, and then that's what they used to do. Um, but uh, when they started, some people feel that uh, they need to empty it out once a week or every time they use it, don't. You will go through so much wood if you do. But I just wanted to explain that with the vents because I've had a couple of people speak to me and go, oh, but it'll block the vent up. It won't block the vent up if, it, if it's done the right way. If you look at uh, a video I did a couple of weeks ago, you'll see that uh, the, the, the bottom where I think it had 33,000 views. And if you look at the bottom, uh, where the ash pan is, it's clear. Because what happens is once you compress the wood, ash, it won't drop down through the grate. So you can take the ash pan out, and I normally just pour it straight on top of it and pack it all up and then hoover up the inside where the ash pan is. But you, these are cool, these are. So when you come to use it, you open this up fully. You pull this to one side so it opens up. I can't remember if it's open or closed. Now, no, let's have a look. It's open now. So basically, can you see that, that that's open and then and then that's closed. So you want both of them open fully. Shut that down, let it heat up. I mean, normally I say, so you feel that there's no way you can touch that. That's when you know it's warm enough. And then you can adjust the vents to, to, to where you want them to be. But a lot of people just use the top vent, never use the bottom ones. Um, but some people use the, the bottom ones and never use the top ones. With the top one, you're always going to have to have it slightly open, otherwise this is just going to soot up all black, make a horrible mess of the, the, the front of the chimney wood burner, and you're never going to actually see uh, the appliance, uh, the fires inside the appliance. So this one's, I'd, I'd leave it like a quarter open or half open. But the warmer it gets, the less you have to have it open. So you can go smaller and smaller. And remember, the less air that's going in there, the slower the burner will burn. And the baffle plate stopping the flame from going up straight up into the into the wood burner like an open fire would. An open fire, the, the difference between an open fire is that they don't have a baffle plate. You can get made up. Um, I've, I've done an ingle nook and they had a terrible draft on it. Hopefully I'll be going back there in, in the next couple of months. And I put a massive like a damper plate inside there. Uh, so, But they use it as a throat plate as well. It's huge. It's, it's, it's about six foot wide. It took two of us to put in. It weighed a ton and we've got it into position and everything. And the great thing is it's got a chain on the side with a hook on this side. And you pull it down and you can use it as a throat plate, which is fantastic. And then, and then you can close it right down when you're not using it. So uh, just remember that that, that air vent on the, on the side there, uh, open that fully. As you can see, it's not going to get any, it's not going to affect the draw of the chimney at all whatsoever on this appliance. Um, it's going to be all fine um, and it's ready to use basically now. Um, I hope this clears a few things up because of a couple of uh, messages that I've had that were a bit confused about. Um, yeah, you must never allow any of the ash to get into the air vents. Um, and, and if you if you can shape the ash at the beginning, you just got to make sure you keep pat, patting the ash down to make it go hard. And then once it goes hard, then then you, you, you it won't move about and you don't want it spilling out of the, the appliance when you open the door. That's perfect the way it is. But as I said, I wouldn't have that bottom piece in. I'd just have that top piece in and I'd fill the ash up right to the top. And um, you have an option with these. Um, and as you can see, like, you know, they wouldn't put that piece in if it was going to affect the air. This, as, uh, uh, so as you can see, that's why that piece can drop down. It's going to be near, see uh, this bolt here? It's not going to uh, touch onto that at all. That's the sort of gap that you've got in between. So I hope this clears this, a few things up for people. And um, yeah, that's, it. that's how you do it. And um, this is going to kick out so much heat for this um, this room. I'm not going to show you the room because it's um, it's obviously not my property. So um, I hope this um, is useful for you. And um, 
and I hope it makes you have lots of good fires that will be ash staining all night and uh, as if you've got this appliance you now know how to remove the baffle plate if you get a bird coming down if you've got a bird netting already on it then that that's fine but if you get a bird or a squirrel coming down I get a lot of customers that have that problem I do bird rescues for charities and stuff like that and um, you know like it's so easy to get them out and this one it's got a little handle and they pull it towards you and then it drops down so hopefully that'll give you a couple of ideas of um, hopefully useful tips uh, regarding uh, your uh, your wood burner and especially if you've got this particular design as well have a lovely day from Zachary Sweet